everyone welcome back to another video on the channel today we're back on gt sport and we're back with the fia nations race at fuji in the x 2019 so for this race i've had to use the replay footage because we forgot to re um, record this race while we were live streaming so i was a little bit frustrated i did download the mp4 file but it just wasn't good enough quality it was only at 720p so i've decided to go with the replay footage you can see on the grid, a very high ranked top split race. We managed to get, I managed to get quite a decent um, qualifying in P4, although it wasn't perfect. Although still only just over a tenth off the of pole position, I think it was. I believe it was a 20, 22.1 was the um, pole position time, or 22.0 something like that. We did a 22.1, I think it was, um, just over a tenth off of pole. But you can see all the way through the grid, some very big names in this race. A very high ranked lobby. I think it was. Just on the 3k, the um, total points list lobby, I think it was 2,963, if I remember correctly, was the overall points that the winner would get from this lobby. So quite a high um, ranked race. So if we can get a good result out of this, this would definitely be enough to up our score within the Nations Championship. I think going into this race, I needed 2.3 to 2.4 really to be pretty much settle on that result so we can move on and then um, that will increase our score slightly although i kind of wanted a bit more than 2.4 really wanted to get a minimum of 2.5 because i was fairly confident about this round i knew my pace was okay in the race and i knew my qualifying pace was fairly good and these races are pretty much all about qualifying at the moment because they're quite short and um, there was a bit of um, tire saving involved with this race with it being 10 laps and the tire wear was quite high i think we were on racing soft tires as well and it was causing a little bit of tyre wear issues on the rear of the car towards the end of the stint. So we were going all the way to the front with the brake bias. We're going to start the race, you can see. So unfortunately, we don't have the deltas on the left-hand side. Now, normally I do have these, but unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. I could have used the um, MP4 file from YouTube, but it just wasn't good enough quality, so I decided against that. So we're starting this race, getting ourselves up into P3, braking for turn one. You can see there, Tenker on the left-hand side tried to squeeze through a gap that was not there and actually pushed out the TRL driver out the race and pretty much put him to the back of the grid. So frustrating for there for the TRL driver. We tried to go around the outside of Rick there, wasn't going to work. And then going through this corner, quite, it was a little bit weird this. You can see we're on the inside and randomly in the mirror, Tanker goes off. When we actually went back to the replay and watched that on the live stream, there was about a meter gap between us, but it looked like a massive desync going on on the game because there was a huge gap between myself and um, Tanker, and his car just randomly turned to the left. So it was uh, a little bit strange, but there was no contact on my screen. So not much I can do about that as we now approach P2. You can see, start, so far, a reasonably good start to this race. We're in P3. We're maintaining the gap to P2, if, and he's got the slipstream to Giorgio. And what I need to do is try and make sure I get a good solid exit off this final corner, just so that we don't give Matu the slipstream. As you can see, he's a little bit away from the slipstream at the moment. I'm just about in range of the slipstream to P2, so taking a nice line into there on the power nice and early. Trying to be cautious though on the throttle, it was really important that you wasn't overly aggressive on the accelerator in this race because the rear tyres could really burn out with this car. So it was just about being gradual on the throttle, trying to be careful on the downshifting as well into the corners and just being generally cautious for the tyre wear as we approach the braking zone into turn one. And you see there, Rick's gonna try and go around the outside of William Giorgio. He gets on the kerb though, and he's not able to make that move. But is he gonna try and hold it on the inside into turn um, two? He is gonna try that, and I see an opportunity here. I saw them battling, get a really good entry into the corner and try and go around the outside of all both the drives in front. William Giorgio tries to fight that off but there's no way I've got that line and he ends up hitting Rick in front of it um, in front of William Giorgio there and gives him a nudge and that actually helps me out and puts me up into P1 so we're actually leading this top split race in the FIA nations now so basically the best start I could have hoped for in this race has come about and we're leading this race so we're going to try our best to maintain this position a lot of pressure now i can tell you when you're in the lead of an fia nations race you do get a bit of pressure especially when you're not used to being there we we have been in the lead before in fia nations races manufacturing races but in a, a race as competitive this this was some of the best drivers on the game and we're leading this race so i've got to just maintain the pressure and we're going to defend this hard you can see rick taking a very tight line through turn one i was opting for the line that was going to save my tyres and get me a better exit whereas he was trying to get in the slipstream so going down the straight we're going to have to defend this um, position into turn one and I was really going to put up a fight there was no way I was going to give up this P1 we were going to fight this with everything we had so going into turn one 
Rick tries to go on the outside. We break late. We're going to take a nice tight line to the apex and get on the power. And if he wants to run around the outside there onto the curb, which he couldn't do, he started flashing at this point, which I don't really see why. He had space on the left. If he wanted to try and risk powering it out with the curb, using a bit of the curb on the left-hand side, he could risk that. But he, um, there was, it just wasn't going to work, so he got a bit frustrated there. But I feel like that was 100% fair defending as we now give ourselves enough of a gap so that he's not in the slipstream. So now we can try and just concentrate on keeping our pay, pace up and trying to make sure we preserve them rear tyres in terms of acceleration. So from this point onwards, we started going into fuel mixture 2 for this final sector. Now, this was nothing to do with um, fuel saving because there was no fuel saving involved with this race. This was purely just a dole the power a bit to them rear tyres and put a little bit less pressure on them tyres through this final technical sector which did kind of take a bit of real life out of them tyres because it was a lot of acceleration zones and cornering at the same time so one trick is again this is something that Tiara Lightning and people like that do so um, learn that from them it does help your tyre wear as we then get a nice solid exit back into one mixture down the main straight as we're about to start lap 4 and you can see no need to go defensive because he's not in the slipstream so I can just concentrate on my racing lines. So back into the lap times that we should be doing around now, 23.4. Um, first, the second lap wasn't particularly great because we had them battling in front of us and we had that little moment. So we lost about a second and a half there where we were battling and trying to get in front and then um, we made that work though. So it was it was good for myself and now we're still in P1 in this race as we go through a slightly better sector time. Again, trying to push at this point, but it's such a hard... Um, You've got to give and take, you've got to be pushing, but you've got to be making sure you're looking after them tyres at the same time because I didn't want to back off so much that I let a group of cars get really close to me, but I didn't want to burn these tyres out and so that I'd have nothing left towards the end as we now approach that technical section where again we're putting that mixture into level two. And you can see we're actually on a better lap and this shows you just how much that lap two was down because really we should have been in the one minute 22s on lap two. I think that like our qualifying time, um, on the first run should have been like a 22 8 22 9 so that was nearly two seconds down on lap two and then lap three was okay lap it wasn't particularly great but this lap's looking a little bit more solid for lap four you can see again he's just i don't know if he's just about to pick up that slipstream as we go down the straight and we got a little bit loose on the entry maybe losing a tenth there as we get on the power but it looks like we're just about outside the slipstream range you can see he's not in the slipstream going down the main straight we're going to go the line and 123.2 so we've actually increased that lap time from the previous lap so not doing bad times at all at this stage of the race on lap four lap five and, you know these the tires are going to start hitting that tire wear now and they're going to start getting a little bit trickier to drive as we get through the acceleration zones it's going to be really important just to look after the, your tires on the downshifting and on the braking phases into the heavy braking zones and also in them that final sector where it's really technical just to not put the power down too aggressively that you take all your life out them tires you can see i am pushing and i can tell you the pressure was really on in this race you can see there a little moment on the rear where we're really trying to get on the power to make sure that we don't give him the chance to get too close to us so 100 percent pressure at this stage and we're dealing with it reasonably well we've got very fast drivers behind us and if I can maintain this to the end, this would be my best result ever on Gran Turismo, in my opinion, um, to pick up a win in this lobby. But uh, like I say, I do like high downforce cars, and that is why I was looking forward to this round. High downforce, high speed, and Fuji is a very good combination for me. I'm very strong at Fuji, so it does tend to give me fairly good results, especially in high downforce cars, as we there get through that final corner. Trying to get on the power. Are we going to have to go to? We're going to go to the right-hand side, you see there, as Rick's just in the slipstream range he was only slightly in there but just because he was just about in there it's managed to gain in time all the way down the straight now into the braking zone but so far in this race our pace has been reasonably good you can see we're on to lap six now and we've not had to do any real defensive driving yet but when it comes to having to do it we're going to definitely put up as much of a fight as possible as i'm not going to let the chance of a top split win in the fi nations just go by like them um, really easy we're going to push this to the very limit of what we can do as we're going through this really long right hand corner again another corner where you have to be a bit cautious on the tyre wear because when that rear the rear tyres start to fade a bit the rear can slowly start coming loose through there but we do that quite nicely getting on the power going into again that real technical section where as usual we're into that fuel mixture too around about this point now on the track 
that enables us just to slow the car down, hit the apex, and be cautious on the throttle. Now, so during practice, I was testing out going into second gear before we get into that section. I think it kind of helped a bit with the tire wear, although I don't think it was quite as fast. So it was a bit of a compromise which way I do it. But you can see that I think Rick, I don't know if he was doing the same thing as myself, going into a fuel mixture two or not. I'm not too sure about that, but they did seem a bit faster through this section. But I felt like it was a good thing to do for mainly looking after them tires and then back into one mixture down the straight. And again, we're gonna have to go to that right hand side of the track. You can see they're picking up the slipstream. Rick is right in that slipstream draft zone. And we're just gonna stay to the right hand side and then back over to the left. But no, I decided I was gonna to go to the left on the normal race line, but I thought no, we're gonna go defensive straight away just in case he's able to go for a move. But you can see he's too far behind, so we can just take that normal racing line and take a tight entry and get on the pile nice and early, just being cautious again on the throttle that we don't lose the rear. You can see we've got a bit of a gap between P, I think it's P4 and 5, and then a bigger gap, I think, between the next battle after that, and quite a considerable gap. So it looks like no matter what, we've got a, a fairly good chance of picking up a top four in this race, although that was not on my mind. I wanted to win in this race, so we're going to fight this to the very end if we have to. But at the moment, we've not really had to do defensive driving. Even though Rick's been getting the slipstream down that straight, we've been driving it well, and we've held on to this lead. And again, into that technical section, you can see, look how close this is between the top four drivers. This is going to get very nervous towards the end of this race, and I can tell you, it really did. I, I was really under a lot of pressure. Obviously, when you're streaming as well, we were streaming to about 500 people or more, I think it was, maybe, I think it might have been higher at one point. Um, so it was quite nervous, and I didn't want to make a big mistake, but I did want to make sure I fought this as hard as possible all the way to the end as we go through that final corner. You see the different lines we were taking? Rick was going really narrow for there. What I was trying to do was look for my exit speed, get a nice um, wide entry, and also to try and help the rear tires. I was trying to consider the tires and also the exit speed to make sure that you're able to fight off into this turn one with as much you know, high speed as possible. We're gonna go defensive again. We're just gonna try and go around the left-hand side, but again, that is not gonna work. We're gonna hold an inside line. He tries to go around the outside. Again, not gonna work. We hold the tight line on the pile nice and early, and we've, got, we've lived to fight another day in this race as we're now onto lap eight, and just three more laps to defend in this race to take the win which would be an absolutely amazing achievement as we go through the really fast right hand corner again able to build that gap up because of the dirty air on this game you can see when we get into the fast corners if anyone's in our slipstream they're just not able to live with the speed that we can do because we've got no i've got no dirty air to live with you know to deal with we can go through there as fast as we want however p2 p3 p4 they're all picking up the slipstream and suffering with that front aero loss all the way through that fast sector but then through this sector sometimes that front aero sec um, front aero loss doesn't lose you out as much because it gives you a bit of understeer and that stop it stops the car being so lively so you actually feel like you can get on the power a little bit earlier as you can see there Rick getting right in that slipstream and again I'm going to take that wide line to try and give myself a nice solid exit from that corner and you can see that actually worked for me it looks like Rick there got a little bit loose on the exit where he takes that tighter line we get a solid exit and again we're going to have to defend into turn one by the looks of it. He's picking up the slipstream. He's going to try and go around the left-hand side. We're going to hold this inside because I felt fairly confident. You know, I can, being on the inside, I can push him as far wide as possible. If he wants a risk going around the outside, he can risk that. As we go into the corner, hold that line, give him enough space on that left-hand side. And again, he's not able to make a move. Um, you know, he's got the curb there on the left-hand side. If he needs to use it, I can push him all the way up to that curb. And he's not able to make the move. We defend it well. And we've only got two more laps to defend in this race to hold this lead this is going to get really intense and a lot of pressure now because towards the end everyone wants to start making the moves but again through that sector you can see the gap increases because the obviously with, when you're in that slipstream you just cannot carry the speed through there but then he's going to get that time back on the straight where he's able to just gain so much speed on acceleration and straight line speed as again through here in that mixture too you can see the car is starting to get really loose on the rear you can see with the the tire wear graph the rears are getting a little bit dangerous now you can see um lap times have dropped off we're in the one minute 24s now we're not doing terrible times but they are starting to drop off a bit as that rear tire wear is take, taking effect and that's even though we had minus five brake bias. So I think it's a good job that we ran that minus five brake bias. I am quite aggressive on tires, and that is why I do stuff like that, because um, it can really help you out in terms of the end of the race. As again, going down the straight, it looks like we're gonna be able to defend again on this lap. Final lap 
final chance to defend. Rick's going to build up a massive slipstream. He goes to the left. He tries to squeeze me to the right. I was going to try and wire them in line. A little bit of contact there. Wasn't deliberate, but we break really late. He tries to get the undercut, but he's not able to do that. He's then going to have the outside line into turn two. But again, it's not really any way you can make the move. I'm going to have the inside line. I take that like normal. And we managed to hold on with great defending again into this really fast right-hand corner. And we've held the lead. So we've just got to keep this together all the way to the last moment of this race can we do this um, it's been aggressive defending but I feel like it was fair and now we're coming to that technical section where there's not a massive amount of overtaking opportunity unless you're really close so and also he's going to be picking up a bit of um, dirt here which will it hinder him a little bit um, and sometimes it can help obviously um, but sometimes it's going to hinder obviously especially fast corners is where it is the biggest loss but these corners are a little bit more technical they're not really flat out you can see second gear we really struggling with that tire wear now you can see the car is starting to understeer as well as oversteer we're gonna have to get on the power really smoothly there in mixture two and the car's actually feeling okay now we've just got this final corner to nail can we do it on the power in second gear early up shift into third gear and i've done that really nicely gonna go to the right hand side of the track it looks like we're gonna take the win in this top zip race i don't think he's going to be able to get us before the line you can see we've got enough straight line speed we go over the win and we take the win in this top zip race what a race and possibly my greatest race on the game i would say my best result by far and i think the most pressure i've ever had on the game um since i've started it because to be in the lead of a lobby like this and you know with the amount of favaris and stuff in there uh, it was really nice. You can see we took 2.963 um, points from this race. So just on the 3K, an amazing result. I'm thoroughly happy with that. Hope you enjoyed that video. I thoroughly enjoyed being involved with it. And hopefully we can pick up some more results like this throughout the official season. There's still quite a few rounds left. Let's hope for some more high downforce races throughout the season to pick up them big points. Anyway, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks again for watching everyone.